I'm Monica Mangan, and I believe that updating your home doesn't have to take a ton of time or money. I show people how to get Pinterest-worthy spaces that are just right for them. Oh my god! This is okay. unbelievable! Give me one weekend, I'll give you five projects, and you'll have a completely transformed space by Monday. I'm in Miami helping out a couple with their sunroom and this couple has actually renovated their house top to bottom. This is the final space that they've yet to tackle. During the renovation process they found out that they were expecting twins so they hurried as much as they could to finish the house but then they put the exterior space on the back burner because life got a little crazy for them. They're looking for a really multi-purpose space that they can enjoy with their entire family so hopefully at the end of this weekend that's just what we give them. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm Robert. Monica's coming in this weekend to help us figure out what to do with the uh, patio. Yeah, our patio is pretty much the worst room in our house. It's like poured concrete for the flooring and that's it. Walls and screen, it's, there's nothing else really in there. Right now we use it primarily as a space for the two of us to hang out while our kids go outside. Uh, we also have a lot of family get-togethers and dinners outside and it'd be nice to have a finished room where we can all sit down comfortably and have a nice dinner really. So the girls are gone for the whole weekend? Yeah, the whole weekend. His mother took them, so. That's exciting. It's the first time in a little while to be alone, so yeah. we're looking forward to the weekend. Alone, but with me and Matt, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I promise you, we will try and get our five projects done. My goal is to get you guys finished and out and on date night. I'll try <laughs> to make it so we're not working through the night. Um, do you spend a lot of time out here, even though it's empty? Yeah, we're out here all the time with Twin girls, they, we need to get outside, need the space. So. Yeah. so you have two twin girls that are two years old. Yeah. You guys are busy. For sure. They like to climb the walls occasionally, <laughs> lots of energy. Um, but that's why the space is so important for us, because we come outside a lot. Yeah. So while they play, you guys kind of chill in the patio here? Girl, it is so nice. <laughs> it's perfect. We hang out on the swing. We get to spend some time like talking, kind of catching up on adult time. That's awesome. I think that's the only one good thing we got going on in here yeah. is our swing. I, I like the swing, and I also really like this bar area. You added that when you did the kitchen right now? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. We just haven't been able to do anything else, so we, we're all out of ideas out here. Yeah, I think that you have the bones of an, the ultimate entertaining space. And what's really cool is that you guys living in Miami can use this space four seasons out of the year. First project up is one I'm going to work on with you out front. So you ready to get started? Yep. All Let's right. I've got five great projects planned for this weekend, and if you want more info on any of the projects that you see, check out my boards on Lowe's Pinterest page. So what we are actually going to be building are frames for the insides of your screen panels. Okay. All right. It'll almost make the big screened in area seem like interior windows. Cool. Let me kind of show you how this is going to go. So top of our frame, bottom, those are the two sides, middle piece. And then additionally, there'll be pieces going like this once we fit it all together. See how that now looks like a window pane? Yeah. Basically, we're going to assemble them here on the table then we'll paint them and then we'll just put them in one piece at a time. And it's a really simple project, but I think it's gonna really change it. Okay, sounds good. To put these frames together, we're using my good old Craig jig, which allows us to hide our screws using pocket holes. It'll keep the frames looking seamless. We have two holes pre-drilled and it kind of is gonna make it so our screws can go in at an angle. So now what we'll do is we'll switch drills. It's different because it's extra long and it has a tip intended specifically for these screws. It's a little square. This square driver bit allows us to get the screws into the pocket holes easier than if we had a short standard bit. All right, so now we have our outer frame and our middle divide, but we need to actually add the little pane dividers. But for those, we're just gonna do that with finishing nails. I chose a black color for these frames to give them a bit of a modern industrial look. This color is called Lincoln Cottage Black from Valspar. 
So I'm super excited to get one of these installed so you can finally see what it's gonna look like. All right. So really, we just took away inches of your view, but we added so much in the department of like style and sophistication. And I think that it makes it feel a lot more like a part of your home than just a porch tacked on at the end. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Now to install these is really simple. We're just gonna put screws in through our frame into the posts here. The easiest way to do this is with a compound square. This handy dandy little tool will ensure that our frame is the exact depth inset into each window pane all the way around. In this case, we're going with a half inch. All right, so you ready to build something with me? Yeah. Now you're a handy point. guy, right? Um, more or less. Yeah, good, I like it. This should make this process easy. I've already prepped a few things for us. Okay. Um, we're gonna build you guys a dining table. Sweet. All right. I know that entertaining and having people over is something you guys want to use the patio space for. So we're going to make our own kind of a rustic farmhouse table. All right. I've designed it based off of one that I saw at a very high-end store. I looked at it and was like, I can totally make that. So we're going to kind of knock off that look um, and do it in a really easy and expensive way. What I have here are a bunch of two by eights. I actually had them cut down to size at Lowe's and then I started putting some pocket holes in them. And one thing that we want to consider when we're thinking about building an exterior table and we're using pine, which is, you know, more inexpensive wood, we want to really think about the way the wood might bow in the humidity. Okay. okay. So one little tip is to look at the rings here and we want to vary them. We want one going up, one going down, one going up, one going down, because the direction that they're going in is the way the wood's going to bow a little. Okay. So it's going to compensate for any movement that the wood has. We're screwing our 2x8s together, again using the pocket holes to hide the screws. Next, we're cutting our end pieces for the tabletop, which will actually run perpendicular to the center pieces. The technical name for these is breadboard. All right, let's check to make sure you are flush. Good here. You're good? All right, so let's do the exact same thing for the other side. Pretty solid, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. And see how the pocket hole technique made it so that you can't see any screws, any nails, anything. That looks pretty great. Pretty great, right? Now it's time to make the table base. We're taking two by fours and rolling wood glue onto one board, then stacking the boards together, further securing them with screws. Since my goal here is to knock off a high-end piece, I'm using all my cost-cutting tricks, like making our own 4x4 posts out of 2 by 4s since it'll cost us about a third of the price. I'm planning on building this entire table for under 100 bucks. And that is how you turn 2 by 4s into a 4 by 4 Now that we've got our 4 by 4s together, we need to cut them to size. Some are straight cuts, but we'll cut the legs of the base at a 10 degree angle to create the shape of an A-frame. So we have all of our shortcuts made now, so I'm going to show you how we're going to assemble the base. It's kind of going to resemble almost like a sawhorse okay. base, okay? So we're going to build two of these and then combine them together. We're going to use something a little bit different for these. These are head bolt lag screws, okay? They're super long, sturdy. They're also going to look really good on the outside. All right, so this is the base of your table. What do you think? I think it looks great. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's cute. <laughs> We're doing a weathered gray stain for the entire table. Once that dries, we'll attach the top to the legs and have ourselves a pretty sweet farmhouse table. All right, guys, you ready for our last project of today? Yeah, we sure are. This guy's ready for a date night, isn't he? Yeah. He's like, time's a ticking, guys. <laughs> Well, this is a really awesome project, and I promise that if you guys help us get it started, Maddie and I will finish it up so you can go on a date. That sounds awesome. good. Sound good? Yeah. All right. The floor in here is one of the elements that I think make it seem like it's not an extension of your home. So we're going to add a new laminate click and lock flooring. All right. So this is your new flooring. and. I can personally attest to this flooring because I have it in my own mudroom. And I have four kids, two dogs, and it is held up brilliantly. It's a vinyl flooring, okay? It just clicks in place. Is it supposed to be outside? Because we get a lot of rain, especially over the summer. Yeah. This flooring is completely waterproof. So 
you have my personal recommendation on this flooring and I think it's gonna look pretty awesome too. This stuff is very simple to install. Just make sure you have a level surface to work with. You don't need glue or nails. Just click and lock the pieces together. To cut it, you can use snips or a chop saw. And remember to make sure you stagger your seams. So what do you think? You liking it? Yeah, it looks good. Once you put it down, you really can't tell that it's so thin. Like it looks almost yeah. just like regular, you know, hardwood does. Yeah, it looks cool. kind of like an, almost like an aged barn wood to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I love that you can't see any seams at all. Right. And how quick is it to install, right? Yeah, that's amazing. I it mean, went super quick. Super fast. So oh. I feel like we're at a place where Matt and I can take over. So that means we can leave and uh, go out? That means you guys can get on a date night. Nice. We got it from here. So go out, have fun, not too much fun. We have a work day tomorrow, okay? okay. We'll keep that in mind. All right, <laughs> out of here, lovebirds. So we are going to work on a project this morning, kind of a decorative project. Any ideas what we're doing? Uh, no, all of this looks like plumbing stuff. <laughs> You're actually not too far off. So I want to add some curtains to the back patio area. I always feel like adding fabric and textiles really softens up a space and makes it feel more like your home, okay? But if we were to just pick up curtain rods, it could very easily rust. You get water in there, you have humidity. So what we're gonna use is black pipe and we are going to actually spray paint it with outdoor anti-rust spray paint. So even a second layer of protection. It's gonna be completely sealed, totally weatherproof. And we're going with this black pipe because it's less expensive than galvanized. It's almost half the cost and it will give us the same kind of heavy duty industrial look. I'll assemble them and put them in the room once they're dry later today. Second part of this is actually the curtains. Now, there are outdoor curtains, but it's a much smaller like style selection. So my trick for this is to get regular interior curtains and use heavy duty Scotch guard on them. All right, ready to flip this guy. Yeah. So you wanna make sure that we get both sides covered. So you have to coat the front and the back. So Matt and I are getting a little artsy here on the Weekender. I wanted to build a piece of art that would work in this exterior space. So Aaron and Robert said they don't get a lot of rain, but humidity and everything like that. So it makes art a little bit tricky. What Matt's done so far is build me a great big square out of two by fours, really simple. We measured it so it's gonna fit in a certain spot in the wall. And now he is measuring out three inch intervals and marking it for me. So it's pretty much gonna be like string art on steroids. We're gonna do a really large rope art installation. So the marks that Matt is making at every three inches are gonna be drilled out and allow the rope to pass through. It's gonna be super cool. I am gonna use a 7 8 inch paddle bit. These holes that I'm making will perfectly fit the rope through, so we're gonna do them on the top and the bottom. This is a great project to have a friend for because it takes a while to drill these holes and the next step involves rope. We're gonna be passing it through back and forth to each other. Matt is so excited about this project, right? Yes! You gotta blow it up when you do it. We are going to take our rope and we're gonna fish it through. I wanna try and do this in one long piece. I'm a huge fan of DIY art projects. If you have a DIY art project you want me to try in the Weekender, leave a comment and let me know. All right, our rope is all woven through, but it's kind of floppy. So right now, Matt's tying a knot at the one end, and we're gonna pull it really tightly through so we get all the way to this end. It'll be all nice and taut, and we can put a knot here as well. Tighten it. Nice, good. All right, so now we have all of these verticals in, and it looks like stripes, and it looks kind of cool, but let's be honest, it also looks a little bit like a prison. So this is where the next step comes in. These lines are going at a diagonal, and it's gonna kind of create a geometric pattern across the verticals. Same process, different look. Last step in our art project is to get a coat of stain on the frame, the same gray stain that we're using on the farmhouse table.
I'm only adding two curtain panels to this entire space because I don't want to block the view, but I'm running the rod the entire length of the screens because I really love the industrial look and they can always add more curtains if they want to down the road. Wow, it's totally different. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Holy crap. Holy crap, I have goosebumps. I'm the one that was trying not to curse and, and you're getting it going. I got close, but I was like, I got it. I can maintain the it. The table looks awesome. Oh, Holy crap. Yeah, it does. It looks really cool. I can't believe you built that. Like, that's like, Oops. that's really cool. It was easy too, right? Yeah, that was pretty good. Pretty good. good. Look how good it looks. Holy cow. This looks awesome. I didn't even look that way yet. That's pretty crazy. Oh my god. That's insane, but it really enhances this space and it actually enhances the view outside. Like yeah. it, it makes it look really, really nice. I can't believe that this is like our same space. That's insane. This looks a lot bigger than, than it did before actually. Yeah, yeah, it does. I didn't think we were gonna be able to fit the table and still feel like we had space. And look, we actually have chairs by the bar now, so <laughs> it's not just like a dump space, like it's nice. It was a walk up stuff. before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pipes look great. Cool, right? Yeah. I mean, we didn't add a ton of curtains to the space, but just enough to kind of soften it up at the edges. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, I just love the look of the pipe too. Yeah, it adds a too. little industrial flair, which I awesome. think works well with your swing. For sure. It looks awesome. Yeah. And how about this floor? Yeah, I mean, it amazing. really changes the feeling in it here. Great. And it was yeah. so easy to put in. I mean, I know you guys were like out on date night. Well, we knocked out a good section in just a few minutes. That was pretty yeah. great. This thing is cool. Do the, you like it? Yeah, it looks really nice. So, it's cool. I'm not an artist, but I can be artsy. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that it would be a really cool way, I think it can be tricky to add art to an outdoor space because yeah. it can get wet, it has to hold up to the elements. So Matt and I made this, it's kind of like a modern abstract rope. Art. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. I really like it. Do you guys oh, feel man. like now the renovation of your home is complete? Like this was the last thing yeah. in your list, right? No, absolutely. Yeah, I feel like it. this is better than the rest of the house now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like the exclamation mark right at the end. Girl, you upgraded us <laughs> big time. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's a wrap on season two. Monica! <laughs> How'd you guys like it? What was your favorite project? What different projects and room types do you want to see next season? Leave us a comment and be sure to check back to see when all new episodes drop.